All right, your dynamite report. So it opened up with MJF backstage with Renee, and he just still can't find three guys to team with him. And he does a video chat with Adam Cole, and man, you guys making fun of my beard. Criminies. <laughs> you should have seen this guy. Well. Where's Britt? So anyway, he says you should consider that Samoa Joe idea. <laughs> And Max says, man, last time we were in the ring, he almost broke my neck. I got a lot to think about. He leaves. Then Roddy shows up, and he says, are we really pretending MJF isn't the guy in the devil mask? And Cole hangs up on him, and then the devil flashed onto the screen. I don't know what's going on here with this devil, but uh, I don't know. This is a weird storyline. <laughs> There's a guy in a devil's mask who shows up every now and then. Do you have a short list of people? Oh, I do? sure do. Okay. And Is no, I do not expect it to sin- be. I do not expect it to be Britt Baker. I know that one was on the internet today. We'll I see. hope we have something cinematic where MJF, you know, pulls off the mask and stares at himself as the Devil's Mask or something like. I just, I wouldn't put it past him at this point. But I'll, I'll complain about something else later on. Go I ahead. would be totally fine with it being Britt, by the way. But I don't think it is. Then we had Orange Cassidy and Claudio International Title. This was a great match. This was a Chikara match. Claudia was the big wild giant. Orange Cassie was a little dude flying all over the place, getting killed, making comebacks. Hurricane Rana for the pin. This was very good. And then, man, Moxley came in through the crowd, probably sitting there thinking about that flight he just took from uh, Ireland, and then he has to get right back in a plane to go to Japan. He was in a mood. So Orange tries to go after him, and Moxley just absolutely just creamed this guy. And then Claudio had to pull him off, and Orange was left for dead. And Moxley's coming for his title at full gear. Which is an interesting, interesting thing, because you know how Tony is. When things go wrong, well, when everything's back to normal, he just goes right back to it. So I would bet that uh, Mox squashes Orange again at this pay-per-view. But I guess Mm. we'll see. MJF asks if Kenny is there. Jericho slams the door on him. MGF runs into the acclaimed. He does not want to team with them. He storms off. Then we had the Young Bucks and Hangman versus the Gates of Agony for the Ring of Honor tag titles. <sighs> Bro, I don't even know where to start. Oh, can I? Yesterday at 3 Eastern. And actually, the show ended at 4 Eastern. No mention of Young Bucks and Hangman, A, having a match on Dynamite, and B, defending the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. So, of course, you know, the show ended, and I went about my day, and I went and taught jujitsu, and and I came home, and I turned on the uh, replay, because I get the West Coast feed or whatever, and all of a sudden, the the Bucks music hits. (laughs) The Young Bucks and Hangman are wrestling on this show? Shouldn't that have been, like, advertised? And uh, and then they come out, and out is it's the Gates of Agony. And they announce it is for the Ring of Honor tag team titles. I said, the Young Bucks and Hangman are having a championship match on the show, and I had no idea this was happening. And it turned out that it was announced at 5.30 p.m. Eastern on Twitter. So they start doing this match, and Hangman's running wild after the break. He goes up to the top rope to do the buckshot, and out comes Swerve. And Swerve notes, I was at your house last week, and then I I swear I almost had a heart attack. I was like, golly gee willikers, he's right! Wait a second. That's the follow-up to the home invasion? Dumb. The follow-up to the home invasion. When Swerve broke into Hangman's house, he cut a promo on Hangman's baby and dropped a a shirt into the baby's crib. The follow-up was that Hangman came to work the next week and went to the ring to have a wrestling match. So Hangman sees a guy come out on the ramp, and apparently he remembered, oh my god, this guy ran into my house last week. I forgot about that. Oh, I'm going to get him now! And he starts running after him. The Bucks are left alone. They are double teamed. Nick Jackson is pinned. 
and the Gates of Agony win the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles from the Elite. I thought, what? What? Whoa, what? 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 So then they, they get mad. They start throwing things around. And they cut backstage and hang minutes were a brawl. And we never see them again. I was absolutely, completely, utterly flabbergasted at this segment. And then later, they do a segment where the the uh, the young bucks are really mad. They're in the locker room with Kenny and Jericho, and Matt says, why did we bother getting back together if we don't have each other's backs? And who let this prick Jericho in here? Jericho said, listen, you guys lost. Don't blame it on me. And Kenny says, hey, the enemy of an enemy is our, is our buddy. And Matt says, listen, guy, it's Jericho. He's just like Don. He's going to screw you in the end. Clean this place up before you leave, and they storm out. So it looks like the Bucks are going, uh, maybe they're going heel. I don't know. But I will say, I will say, I will say. Oh, God. Go ahead. The Go one ahead. good thing about this mm -hmm. is that at least they now appear to be doing a storyline with the Elite. Because if you recall, they signed them and proceeded to do absolutely, positively zilch with them. Nothing, okay? So at least now there's like a storyline that appears to be starting here. But this mm. this show, I was just, my mind was blown by it's this more one. of a copper lining than a silver lining in the Hey, cloud. it's something. I'm still not willing to let go of the fact that they break into a man's house. Where was anybody else in that house as they are talking to this baby in a bed? I, it just, it, it, in the crib, it just was incredibly stupid. And then the, in the segment before, you have Hook being threatened by the announcers that he could be suspended because he sort of put his hands on Pat Buck, but Swerve has committed multiple fel felonies in the time that he has been there and nothing has happened to him. And in fact, during the day, Prince Nana, who was a part of all of that, is able to invoke a rematch clause that afternoon for this six-man tag team title match and then Hangman Page just calmly walking to the ring, willing to wrestle yes. for the company what? that has not suspended Swerve and Nana and allowing them to, like, commit these felonies against him and not only that commandeer the microphone and walk out there and take over the show look look if wrestling is going towards lucha underground uh, fine that's fine you need to weave things better and, and to me you you can't have these multiple things just happening on different levels and expect them to mesh and expect a lot of people like me not to go this is completely ridiculous. Please. Lenny says, Hanger was actually pretty pissed for most of the match. Only Lenny! Why would he wrestle? Why would he wrestle? His baby was just... Oops, uh... Okay, anyway, Tony. It's with Adam Copeland. And Christian's music hits. And long story short, Christian threatens to break Edge's, uh, Adam's neck. He sends Nick and Luchasaurus to go after him. Sting and Darby make the save. Darby apparently is fine. He has no sling. He's run wild. He ran 500 miles an hour. About fine. But... And so they announced the six-man match for full gear. Which, man, when that was over, I thought, is Edge going to screw Sting and Darby? Like, are we already going there? Oh, no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. And then uh, you had the big announcement. And then well, it was... was... It Edge, Edge Sting for Sting's last match on? I, that's a big match, but... We had Jericho and Omega versus Daddy Magic and Cool Hand with Don Callis on commentary. And Jake Hager at ringside. And Jericho hit the Judas effect after Angelo Parker got in the ring with a baseball bat and did the, the wildest swing. And this is during the World Series, by the way. Nobody swung that bat faster than him, and the ref's like, that's okay, you, you know, he didn't hit his head. And that's not a DQ. So Jericho hits the move and pins him. And then, you know, the heels come down, and then... Uh, a long story short, in Ontario, California, on Dynamite, they're going to do a, a, a multi-man tag. It's Jericho and Kenny and Coda against the Don Callis family. But then when Don notes, you know, you're still outnumbered here, Jericho says, well, I've got a friend who's even bigger than Hobbs. And Don goes, nobody's bigger than Will Hobbs! And out comes Paul White, who is in That's fact That's what Chris Jericho bigger. should have said, well, and then Paul White could have come out. We had Sheeta beating Willow Nightingale for the women's title, which was a good match. 
retained. And uh, yeah, retained. And then Tony Storm came out to set up Sheeta and Tony Storm at the pay per view. And then uh, Julia appears in the ring. She stares at Willow. She wants a handshake. Willow doesn't want to give it to her. So Sky Blue flies into the ring. She gets between them. Everybody figures, oh man, she's going to miss old Willow. But instead, she mists Julia, or at least she tries, and Julia bails. So for the moment, Sky Blue is still a, a baby face here. What's up with all the spitting in the face and the staring and whatnot? Did I? I don't know. So then the main event. It is uh, Switchblade and his crew coming to the ring. And yes, they hit the Acclaimed's music. And the Acclaimed come down. They do their rap. And then out comes MJF. He he has, uh, for whatever reason, which is not explained, because it was just like a week ago, he said he wouldn't team with these guys even if he's on fire. Well, it turns out he just needed partners, so he teamed with them. So he comes out, and he wears pink. That was one of the stipulations they gave him. You must wear this outfit. And so uh, they do this match. And uh, the whole story is that Switchblade avoids, 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 avoids. And finally, the heels go for 310 to Yuma. MJF avoids it. He hits the kangaroo kick, sending them outside. And then he turns around and is hit with the Blade Runner and pinned clean in the middle of the ring. No distraction. He was just beaten by the better man. Who is not going to beat him at full gear, Leonard. Look, Brian. Oh my God! Look, go back and look at the chat. Look at it. I can't. He's I can't a, look he's at in it. In all caps. Oh, I can't. Man. I can't oh. do it. No, then, so then, and then, Jay and man, you guys, if you have not seen the show, you do have to watch this. Jay is going to waffle MJF with the belt. Max Caster jumps in to take the bullet, and oh my God, watch this bump that Max Caster takes. His head bounced off the mat like. It was an NBA game. I couldn't believe that it didn't, like, get detached to hit the mat so hard. So he's dead. And then uh, somehow, you know, he's able to hold the two fingers up. He wants to scissor. And MJF shoves his hand away and goes to leave. And, and Daddy Ass basically tells him, after all this guy did to you, you owe him this. <laughs> so Max goes to the corner and does the uh, four-way scissor spot. <laughs> so, you know, this was a weird show, brother. Billy Gunn on his birthday, his 60th birthday in all pink, yelling, you're going to effing, and that got through the, uh, the <laughs> Max's whole rap was basically uh, uh, blanked out by the censors, but Billy Gunn got that through, yelling at MJF, because you're going to do this, you're going to effing scissor, and scissor they did to end the show. Yeah, I, th this, this MJF character the last two weeks, the, the thing is, it's an MJF character, he, but this character all... is doing so much that is out of character. Yes. You yes. just said you would not team with them if you were on fire. Well, then it turns out that just, you did. They're burning this character out, the character of MJF. They got him seven million different ways, and unfortunately, not all of them are the right way. You have Max Caster on Wednesday was giving MGF unwelcome physical groping. Daddy Ass was calling himself Mr. Ass for decades now. And then you have the Iron Savages. All these men want to do, in their own words, is eat their opponent's asses. Yeah. Anthony Bones is the straightest guy in this match. Tony Storm also ate ass. What's going on here? Sky Blue has a very, um... Thick. Thank you. Uh, backside, of course, Tony's the same way. So they had to one-up that somehow. Kira Hogan, well, she fits the bill. Kira is running wild, and Tony cuts her off by eating her ass. This is the kinkiest wrestling show I've seen in a long, long time. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.